I've been using this 15 inch M3 MacBook Air for just over two weeks at this point. And you know what? I'm loving using it. It's becoming my favorite Mac to use, possibly, out of all the Macs I own. And I'll tell you why later on. And also I'll be telling you why Apple Silicon is now even more central and important to my daily and weekly workflow than it was just a few days ago. But that, that's all to come. Now, this is my first bite at M3 Apple Silicon. If you've watched me or any of the videos on this channel, you'll know that last fall I bought the M3 iMac and I bought that in the base specs. I took some heat for it in the comments, but there was a reason that I bought the base spec. And by base, I mean eight gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage. Because of what I do here on the channel, I thought it was a great way for me to tell you and let you know how decent, how performant, that basic, that cheapest M3 chip was. What was it capable of? And I'm glad that I bought that spec. I still use the iMac all of the time, every day. I write most of my blogs on it. It is a lovely, lovely machine. You know how much I love iMacs. But the eight gigs has got its limits and you find out those limits pretty quickly. As soon as you've got a few Chrome tabs open, as soon as maybe you're doing a little bit of Photoshop work with some layers in, you begin noticing memory swapping, everything begins slowing down. Now, so I'm not complaining, I bought it eyes open, but when I was buying this M3 MacBook Air, it was a very different case for me. I knew that I was gonna use this almost as a, a MacBook Pro Lite. I'll, I'll explain what I mean. It, when all the videos you see on this channel are edited, all the audio and video that you see and hear on this channel are edited on my M1 Max MacBook Pro. I bought that three years ago, and it's as good now as the day that I bought it. It's a beast. It's pretty well tripped out, 32 gigs of unified memory, four terabytes of storage, but it's expensive and it's heavy, but it's expensive. It cost me nearly 4,000 pound with taxes, and because it costs so much, I don't really want to be moving that away from home any more than I absolutely have to. I want to leave that safe. I don't want to risk it being stolen or damaged in any way. So when I was buying this MacBook Air, not only was it going to be for the channel, but it was going to be a machine that I was going to use regularly. The idea being that I'd bring it and the Samsung T7 SSD with me. I would work on files here, be it say some Lightroom work with some presets, maybe open up and start a multi-layer document in Photoshop for the thumbnails, and even start a timeline in video editing. Start it here on the MacBook Air, take the SSD home with me, and then carry on on the MacBook Pro. And so far, it's been a dream to use. The specs that I chose on this machine were 512 gigs of storage and 16 gigs of RAM. Now, first of all, the RAM, I've noticed a massive improvement with having that 16 gigs of RAM. It gives you so much more headroom. I haven't noticed any slowing down. I don't think I've noticed any memory swapping. It has been fantastic to use. That extra eight gigs, it's just a different playing field. As for the storage, well, I'm not as hooked up on storage as I used to be. A lot of what we use is cloud-based now. Dropbox, for instance, with SmartSync, you can access all your files locally, but without them taking up anywhere near the space they used to. And of course, external drives like this uh, Samsung T7 SSD are cheap. It's a really efficient way to have storage. Now, yes, it is more convenient to have onboard storage. Of course it is. But what I'm saying is that if you've got endless budget, okay, spec it as much as you want, but I would always suggest in the first instance, go for as much RAM as you can before storage. 256 is too low, but well, 512, I've been really happy with. So, so far the specs on this, I have been delighted with. It's been the sweet spot for me. And as I said, I've actually started to use this MacBook Air more than any other Mac over the past two weeks. And that, that is high praise. I'm going to tell you a bit more about how I found working with it in just a moment. But first of all, to say thank you yet again, another great week on the channel, loads of new subs. And we're on the drive now. We've passed through the 5,000. We are on to 10,000. I'd love to get to 10,000 subs before the end of summer, quicker if we possibly can. It makes a massive difference to me. So if you're watching the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, it really does make a difference. And if you're new to the channel, hello, and it's great to have you along. But honestly, subscribing, turning on notifications, liking, sharing, it really does help. So if you're enjoying the content that I'm making, just remember, sub, like, share. It's huge to me. Now, back to the MacBook Air. With Apple Silicon M3, clearly you're not gonna see the big change, the, the massive change we saw from Intel over to Apple Silicon. I can't say it's never gonna happen again, I'm not a soothsayer, but it's fair to say that's pretty much a once in a generation kind of change we saw from Intel to Apple Silicon. But what I would say, having used M1, M2, and M3 Apple Silicon, is that there are changes each time, small and minor changes, 
battery life, for instance, is just that little bit longer. I'm regularly out for eight to 10 hours of the day with this MacBook Air, and never once do I think of bringing the charger with me, and it gets through the day with, as I've said, some sort of Photoshop work, Lightroom work, video editing, it gets through the day in a breeze. I've still generally got 40 to 50% of battery left even after eight or nine hours away from home working on it. And everything just feels sharper and quicker on M3 Apple Silicon. And of course, if you're a gamer, which I'm not, but if you're a gamer with ray tracing and so on, it's a huge improvement. And I'll come on to who I think this machine is for and who M3 Apple Silicon is for in just a few moments time. The other things that I've found that I really enjoy with using this 15 inch M3 MacBook Air, apart from the size of the screen, is also the keyboard. Now the keyboard, because it's lower to the desk than the MacBook Pro, it is so comfortable to use. I haven't used the keyboard on the MacBook Pro that often, where it sits at home, it's at the back, a way too far out of reach, so I've been using a magic keyboard. But the keyboard on this MacBook Air feels just beautiful to use. Sadly, I'm no touch typist. I write three blogs a week, and if you want to find my blogs, they're over on Medium under D Talking Tech. But this keyboard, even for somebody like me that's a moderate typer, it feels so balanced and so quick. It is gorgeous to use. And I say because it sits flat to the desk, it's comfortable on the wrists. The screen, now I know I'm going to take some, some comments on this. Clearly, at the moment, until the OLED iPads come out, whenever that is, the best screen that I've got is the XDR panel on my MacBook Pro. But you know what? I don't actually notice that much of a difference between using that display or the display on the MacBook Air. They're the same brightness, and brightness is one of the things I notice most of all. And the 120 hertz refresh rate, I don't really notice. Now again, that's specific to what I do, because most of what I do is on a static screen, video editing, photo editing, writing, it's all on a static screen. So the screen and the combination of the screen and keyboard on here and the exercise, this has been such a dream machine. I didn't think I could enjoy using a Mac as much as I've been enjoying using this, and it's so portable still as well. Now, I mentioned that Apple Silicon is even more central to my work life now than it was just a few days ago. And why is that? Well, until now, I've been an Adobe user through and through. I've used Adobe products for maybe 10, 11 years at this point, and I'm really comfortable in Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere Pro, Adobe Audition, InDesign. I love working in Adobe. And I've got used to their shortcuts. I've got used to the way they work. And I was worried about moving away from Premiere Pro because of having to retrain myself. But because of the fact that we know we're getting iPad Pro soon, I wanted to make a video about using Final Cut on the iPad. And as I haven't used Final Cut, that had been kind of tricky. So I decided to download Final Cut onto both my MacBook Air and my MacBook Pro and start learning how to use it. And you know what? I've had so much fun. What I didn't realize was, although I was scared about losing time in relearning skills I had because of being so Adobe, I'm also very Apple. And all of the menus in Final Cut just are very Apple-esque. The lingo, the jargon, it all kind of makes sense. Sure, I've had to find a few different things, a few different scopes and ways of working, but it comes to you quickly. It just seems more fun, and that could be a case of the Emperor's New Clothes, I don't know. I, at this point, don't know if this video will be edited in Final Cut. I'm hoping so, I need to buy some plugins, but I reckon I'm ready to start editing in it. it. Honestly, it's that quick to learn. The whole magnetic timeline isn't as scary as it sounds. And the biggest thing that I've seen is the color of exports. In Premiere Pro, it's a known problem that when you export, the color you see isn't the color you end up uploading and see on YouTube. So far, the shorts that I've made editing in Final Cut that are on the channel, that I've, the last two or three shorts, I think, have been edited in Final Cut. The color is so much nicer. It's really quick to use, and of course, it's optimized for Apple Silicon. It is so quick. Exports weren't slow in Premiere, but they're really, really quick using Final Cut. So if you're a Premiere user, and I'm not coming down hard on Premiere, I still love it. It's still a great program, but give Final Cut a go. I am going to spend more time working with Final Cut over the next couple of weeks because I've seen how optimized it is for Apple Silicon. So who's this M3 for? Clearly, if you're still using an Intel MacBook Pro even, or Intel MacBook Air, you're gonna notice a massive, massive change coming over to this M3 Apple Silicon. Now there are bargains to be had at the moment. Over in the States, I think it's in Walmart, you can still buy the base level M1 MacBook Air for I think it's 700 bucks, which is a bargain. For many people, that will do the job. Now I think it's only available in the base specs with eight gigs, and that eight gigs is an issue I just want to draw your attention to. As long as you are safe in the knowledge that all you're gonna be doing on your Mac is surfing, emailing, and doing admin work, eight gigs will see you safely through. 
anything above that, go for the 16. Spend your money on that unified memory. It makes such a massive difference. I've seen the difference myself between the M3 iMac with eight gigs and this M3 MacBook Air with 16 gigs. It gives you so much more headroom and allows you so much more scope. I've been delighted with the machine that I bought. It's done exactly what I've asked for it and just been fantastic to use. So just spend some time making sure you get the specs right. Let me know though, have you bought an M3 MacBook Air yet? And are you as happy with yours as I am clearly with mine? I've loved it. I can't give it any more praise and saying it's my favorite Mac to use out of all the Macs I've got at the moment. It really is that good. But if there's anything else you'd like me to cover about the M3 MacBook Air, or maybe even about Final Cut, let me know in the comments. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed yet, it would make a massive difference to me if you did. It really would help the channel out. And just one final thought before I go this week, I didn't think I could be any further walled in to Apple's ecosystem than I was a few days ago. But now with Final Cut and the M3 MacBook Air, somehow I am not complaining, I'm loving working on them. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll be back next week with another video. Who knows, will it be on the iPad? We doubt it, but I'll be back with another video in just a few days time. Take care, thanks for watching, and I shall see you real soon.